Hi there! In this video, we will talk about the properties of solids, liquids, and gases based on the particle nature of matter. So let's get started! When you compare the pencil, laptop, and smartphone, surely you will say that the laptop is the heaviest of the three objects, while the pencil seems to be the lightest. On the other hand, the smartphone may not be as heavy as the laptop, but it is not as light as the pencil. What does this indicate? It means that objects or things around us may be light or heavy, or, simply put, that these things have mass. Mass is the measure of the amount of matter the object has. The objects in the picture show that they occupy a space. Volume is the measure of the space occupied by an object. So what do we call these objects that have mass and volume? We call them matter. How about air inside a balloon? Does it have mass? Does it occupy space? The air placed inside a balloon occupies space. Thus, we are able to inflate balloons. Air also adds mass to balloons. Hence, the air inside balloons are considered as matter. How about heat and light? Do they have mass? Do they occupy space? Heat is energy in transit and light is a form of energy. They do not have mass and they do not occupy space, so they are not considered matter. Variety in matter can be traced to the nature of the particles composing them. One example of matter noted for its variety in physical form is water. Water is a common substance that we encounter every day. The icebergs, the ocean water, and the vapor in the sky are all considered water, but they are of different states. Alright, let's do a quick activity. Fill a cylindrical glass bottle with water up to the 10 ml mark. The bottle has line markings for the 10 ml and the 16 ml mark. The lower line marking is the 10 ml mark while the higher one is the 16 ml mark. Add 5 1 4th teaspoonfuls of sugar in the bottle. Mix or shake thoroughly until all the sugar is dissolved. What is the volume of the sugar and water mixture? What should be the total volume of the solution? Now let's recall the volumes in our experiment. We poured 10 ml of water in the cylindrical glass bottle. We added 1 4th teaspoon of sugar to the cylindrical glass bottle 5 times. Note that 1 4th teaspoon is equivalent to 1.2 ml. Therefore, 1.2 ml times 5 equals 6 ml of sugar. So the total volume inside the cylindrical glass bottle must be 10 ml of water plus 6 ml of sugar equals 16 ml. You have observed that the resulting volume is less than 16 ml. Why is this so? Water is made up of tiny particles called molecules with spaces between them. Sugar is also made up of molecules bigger than the molecules of water. The water molecules could fit in the spaces between the sugar molecules, or vice versa. Let's continue with another activity. Pour one cup of tap water into a transparent glass bottle. Add one small drop of food coloring slowly. You may have observed that the food coloring starts to spread to the other parts of the water. Set aside the bottle with food coloring in a locker or corner of your room without disturbing the setup. After one day, what happens to the food coloring dropped in the bottle containing water? Think about food coloring and water as made up of particles. You may have observed this time that the food coloring is evenly scattered all throughout the water. 
Who figured out that all matter is composed of tiny particles called atoms? It was the Greek philosophers Leosippus and Democritus at about 5th century BC who had an idea that all matter consisted of small uncuttable particles called atomos and later on came to be known as atoms. All forms of matter are made up of tiny particles that are in constant random motion. Scientists call this characteristic as particulate nature of matter. After more than 2,000 years, the ancient philosopher's idea about atoms became a theory when John Dalton put together many observations and results of several experiments done by other scientists and formulated the atomic theory. Early scientists attempted to explain the composition and behavior of matter through the molecular theory of matter. This theory has the following assumptions. 1. All matter is made up of small particles called molecules. 2. There are spaces between molecules. 3. Molecules are constantly moving. And 4. Molecules attract one another. This theory was later on improved through the course of time and named as kinetic molecular theory of matter. A molecule is a particle consisting of two or more atoms combined in a specific arrangement. It is an electrically neutral particle and is the smallest particle of an element or compound that can exist independently. For example, a molecule of water consists of an oxygen atom combined with two hydrogen atoms. Atoms of the same element can also combine to form a molecule. For example, oxygen in the air consists of oxygen molecules which are made up of two oxygen atoms. Going back to our previous example, we said that the iceberg, ocean water, and the vapor in the sky are all water. So why do they look very different from each other? This observed difference in water originates from the nature of water particles. The particle theory of matter describes the phases of matter at the microscopic level. It also explains the differences in the properties of solids, liquids, and gases. Moreover, the theory also explains the changes of phases of matter. In an iceberg, the particles are packed closely together and vibrate a little in place but in fixed positions. Icebergs are considered as solids. Its particles are held together by strong forces. Solids have definite shape and volume. They are incompressible. Why does a solid behave differently from a liquid or a gas? This question can be answered using the concept on the molecular structure of solids, liquids, and gases. Let's take for example, air inside a balloon. The particles of air inside a balloon are in constant motion and are far apart from each other. They are considered as gas since their particles can move to any space available. When you inflate or deflate a balloon, its shape changes. The shape changes because air is a gas. Gas is a state of matter that has no definite shape or volume. The particles of a gas move very quick and fast, so they can break away completely from one another. There is low attraction between particles of a gas and between particles of the same element in the solid or liquid state. The particles of water are closer to one another than the gas particles and they are in constant motion. Water in a glass is considered as liquid. Their particles move fast enough to overcome some of the attraction between them. The attraction between their particles are stronger than those in gases. Liquids do not have a definite shape and just like gases, they take the shape of their container. 
the particles slide past one another but stay together. Liquids have unique characteristics. A special property of liquids is surface tension. Surface tension is a force that acts on the particles at the surface of a liquid. Surface tension causes some liquids to form spherical drops like the beads of water. Different liquids have different surface tensions. For example, cooking oil has a very low surface tension and forms flat drops. Another important property of liquids is viscosity. Viscosity is a liquid's resistance to flow. Usually, the stronger the attractions between the particles of a liquid, the more viscous the liquid is. For example, if we drop a pebble in different containers with honey, oil, and water, the pebble will sink to the bottom fastest in water, followed by honey, and last in oil. This is because oil is the most viscous liquid among the three, while water is the least viscous. Now let's wrap things up. Matter is made up of tiny particles called atoms. Atoms are the smallest particles of matter. Molecules are atoms bonded together. The states of matter are the physical forms in which a substance can exist. Shape is the external form or appearance of an object. Volume is the measure of how much space an object takes up. Surface tension is a force that acts on the particles at the surface of a liquid. And viscosity is a liquid's resistance to flow. Here is a table summarizing the characteristics of solids, liquids, and gases. Solids retain a fixed volume and shape. Liquids follow the shape of the container it occupies. Gases follow the shape and volume of its container. In solids, particles are locked into place. In liquids, particles can slide past one another. The particles in gas can move fast between one another. Solids and liquids are not compressible. Gases, on the other hand, can be compressed. In solids, spaces between particles are unnoticeable. In liquids, there is little free space between particles and lots of free space between particles in gases. Lastly, solids do not flow. Liquids and gases do. That's all for now. We will be discussing about physical changes in matter in terms of the arrangement and motion of atoms and molecules in our next video, so stay tuned! See you on our next video and don't forget to keep your minds busy! If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification icon for more videos like this.